We now have the pleasure of being joined by Ken Segura of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution to preview this Saturday's game between Syracuse and Georgia Tech. Ken, how are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. Kind of a busy day, but uh, but doing well. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Getting doing ready good. for Saturday's game between the Orange and the Yellow Jackets. The first and only meeting of the season between these two teams. But let's start by looking at this Georgia Tech squad, Ken. You know, it's been a tough go of it for the last few days, last few weeks, really. Uh, what has been the, at the forefront of the problems for the Yellow Jackets and why have they struggled so much recently? Um, I would think primarily they're just having trouble generating consistent offense. Um, you know, they've been generally been in the sixties, sometimes low sixties. And, uh, and as you know, Josh Pastor, the coach has said many times, you, you just can't win in the ACC if you're, if you can't crack 70. Um, so yeah, so they run a, a, uh, a, an offshoot of the Princeton offense, which, you know, so they have, the center, uh, usually Rodney Howard at the elbow, and a lot of things kind of run through him, a lot of cutting to the basket. And um, it hasn't worked probably for a few different reasons as well as it, it could. Um, Rodney isn't the I, – I think he's a tryhard guy. He's, he's he's gotten better for sure, but he's not, you know, a, what you'd call like a, a gifted passer, not like, a you know, your traditional or kind of the prototypical point center or point forward. So that's part of it. Um, they've kind of been inconsistent with three-point shooting. You know, Josh Passer had mentioned many, many times he thought they'd be a better shooting team. They're not bad, and they've had a number of games where they've been in, you know, 36, 37, 38 percent shooting from three, but not consistently. And actually, they played NC State uh, last night. It goes Tuesday night, and they were two for I think it was 21, nine, nine percent, 10 percent, and obviously that was just kind of a an outlier, but, but speaks a little bit to just kind of the struggles they've had there. Um, it's not the biggest team, um, size wise, you know, they get overpowered sometimes too. Uh, so yes, but, but yeah, to answer your question, the, you know, the issue generally has been is not getting enough offense out of, out of what they have. Do you think, what, what do you think changed since the non-conference schedule? Georgia Tech started out seven and three. Now they're mm -hmm. one and seven in conference play. What do you think, has been kind of the contributing factor to that switch where they did good in the non-conference, right. but they've struggled in the conference play. Um, I mean, certainly the the schedule itself, obviously, uh, it goes without saying, you know, the teams typically, at least with Georgia Tech, that they're playing aren't as, aren't as competitive as what they're going to face in, in ACC. I mean, they played, uh, you know, one they opened with one uh, Division II school and they played a lot of mid-majors that, you know, frankly, they were just better than. Um, they played a really, you know, they're probably their best game maybe the season was against Georgia who's turned out to be a pretty good team. And they, they, I would say they played their best offensive game. And so they were able to, to manage that, but, uh, but yeah, and then too, probably, you know, they're, they, um, they run kind of a, a unique uh, defense that one, three, one, or maybe unique, but un unusual and an offense is kind of a little different. And, you know, maybe part of it's too, they're playing when they play SEC teams, they're playing against coaches and players that have seen this already. And, and maybe it's not as big of an adjustment for them, but um, but yeah, I would. But generally, mostly it's that's his schedule. They they played some pretty tough teams already, and uh, and yeah, and so it's uh, that's that's been a big piece, I think. When you look at this roster for the Yellow Jackets, no one really jumps off the page. There's nothing when you look at the stat right. sheet that screams, "This is a guy we have to watch." Right. From an for, at least from an outsider's perspective, mm -hmm. how much do you think that is a, a product of recruiting? Is it a product of coaching of development? What is there to say about this roster and how it's been put together specifically for this season? That's a good question. Um, I, I think it's probably a lot of some of those things. Um, you know, they. Uh, you know, they had two really good players last year who, who've left who were seniors, Michael DeVoe and Jordan Usher. Michael was an all ICC player. Jordan could well have been, um, but you know, they're not with us. And they, uh, you know, they had another good piece, Khaled Moore, who's from New York, who's who left as a to use his COVID year elsewhere. They had a, another kid, um, Bubba Parham, who was a three point shooter, who also left for the same by the same means. Um, but yeah, they, they depend a lot on, on three sophomores or four, if you want to include Davon Smith, uh, Miles Kelly and Jalen Moore, Jalen Moore and, uh, and Debo Coleman and, uh, Miles Kelly for sure has gotten better. He's a leading scorer. The other, and Jalen Moore actually has two, but they're probably not quite to the point where they're ready to be, you know, 
guys you really need to be wary of. Um, they, they have potential to. And I think um, if you remember back, this may, may precede you guys a little bit, but, um, you know, kind of the the high, well, certainly the high point of, of Josh Passer's tenure was two years ago, uh, the 2021 season when they won the ACC title. They depended a lot on two guys, uh, Jose Alvarado, who's from New York, Moses Wright, who was really largely ignored by most power, almost all power conference schools. And they were able to develop over 40 years into the ACC player of the year and the defense player of the year. And so I think, you know, they've prided themselves a lot, Georgia Tech has, on, on developing guys. And where they are right now is, you know, no one's quite kind of at the peak of that cycle. You know, they I think for different reasons, you know, the portal and and some misses in recruiting, um, they, they're not stocked, you know, annually the way I think they would like to have it. But, um, you know, if, if, you, if they're able to, you know, stick with this team for a year, another two years, I think you'll see them being much more competitive but right now. They're, yeah, they're maybe kind of at a, a down cycle in terms of talent and, and, you know, that kind of what you're saying, that, that star, star, uh, star quality. You mentioned Miles Kelly. He's a sophomore leading Georgia Tech and scoring with 13 um, mm-hmm. points per game. He only started one game his freshman year. And now he started 12. Right. Well, can you kind of speak to his development from uh, freshman year to sophomore year? Sure. Yeah. Well, I think part of it was, excuse me, he had um, two guards, as I mentioned, in in Jordan Usher and Michael Devo, who are taking a lot of minutes. And one thing that, that Josh Master kind of relies on is if he has a guy that he trusts, he's going to put him on the floor for, you know, 35, 38 minutes. And so that doesn't leave a lot of time for everyone else. Um, you know, as and then and two, I think Miles Miles was someone that's um you needed to develop a little bit, you know, probably needed to add some strength. And I think you saw this the scoring potential. He he it was it was interesting. He had a really, really like you kind of knew he could shoot, but he it just wasn't showing up in games. And then as I if memory serves, as the course of the year went on, that started showing up a little more. And then this year, um, yeah, just having the opportunity to get in the lineup and and it's it, I think his his shot become became a lot more consistent. And so that's kind of a lot of what you saw you've seen with him. When you look at the surface level of this team, it's a, a developmental group, a young right. team. Are there any stories that you've been able to uncover about this group being day in and day out with the program that, you know, maybe not be something that, you know, another ACC team knows right. about this Georgia Tech squad? Anything that you found? Uh, well, I mean, to go back to those three three sophomores, I think they were recruited kind of together. And and I think they came in with a, with a strong bond. And um, so there's that, that I think, you know, they're – that unit, those three guys are, I think they're, you know, I think they're, they're all good friends and, and, um, and have a close bond. And I think they're probably anticipating, you know, when they're juniors and seniors, they're going to become the sorts of, you know, have the sorts of teams maybe that the tech had a couple of years ago, uh, off the top of my head, um, you know, Davon Smith, actually, well, it may be something that's, I don't know, this is quite what you had in mind, but Davon Smith, uh, Kyle Sturdivant, two guards, and there might be others. Uh, it's hard to remember, but they're two guys that um, were are from the state of Georgia, from Atlanta, uh, Atlanta suburbs of Atlanta, and they they went elsewhere as as freshmen at at high school and decided to transfer back. And that's one thing that I think where where uh, Pastor and his staff have tried to have some success. In you know, maybe they're not going to get kids the first time out, but you know, if, if they realize that, Hey, you know, I kind of want to be in Atlanta or maybe I'm not getting the playing time I wanted to at the school I'm at. Um, you know, I remember, you know, coach Pastor and his staff were really good. And, and, and so that's kind of been a, a something that's been, been worked for them. Um, uh, Rodney Howard, the center is a little bit to that degree. He's, he went to high school for a year or two in, in the Atlanta area and, and went to Georgia and then transferred over. So that's uh, uh, an area that that Georgia Tech has had some success in. Um, so yeah, I guess Tom, I had that's those are, those are some guys or some stories, I guess that that you know are a little off the beaten path with you know, that you don't always hear. You mentioned earlier that Georgia Tech was the ACC champs in 2021. Now starting one in seven in conference play, do you think mm-hmm. it's more? of the coaching from past or do you think it was more that the personnel graduated or was exiting from the transfer portal? We've seen that the transfer portal is becoming huge nowadays. What do you think is more of the reason why Georgia Tech is struggling to start this uh, conference season? 
Um, it's a few things. One, uh, as I said, losing two really, you know, guys that were doing a lot of scoring for you in Devon Usher to the, the portal, as you mentioned, um, tech did not do well. Um, you know, I think if you talk to different people, I think, you know, the, the fact that they don't have their NIL going and, and certainly they, they weren't coming off a very good year to, to appeal to a lot of kids, I would think. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then, yeah. So those are two reasons I think why they probably didn't do quite as well as they were hoping to. And I mean, there are guys they went after that they, you know, they were in the, you know, final two or three that didn't, they weren't able to convince to come to tech and have gone elsewhere and, and done well, done well. Um, so I think, you, I think if you'd ask Josh Pastor, he would say, yeah, if we had player X player Y, they'd probably be in better position. Um, and then to, uh, you know, to go back to the shooting, I don't think it's, I think they were thinking this could be a team that they could really depend on a lot on that and, and be, you know, hit 12, 13 threes and, and, uh, and to have that be their, their strength. And from time to time it has been, but not always. Um, and then too, I mean, I guess, yeah, you know, one thing that Josh Pastor has mentioned a lot is that, you know, he is, his model has been the, you know, teams like Virginia and Notre Dame, maybe Notre Dame, not quite as much, but Virginia, they, or they, you know, he uses the phrase get old and stay old, which means, you know, you're, you're developing guys and then you're bringing in guys under them and developing them. And when you're seniors and juniors who you're depending on leave, then you've got freshmen and sophomores ready to go and fill in those slots. And it's been more hit and miss, I think, you know, because of transfers and because probably some misses in recruiting that, that it hasn't achieved that not by any stretch, the sort of consistency that they wanted. And so now they're depending on a, at a team that's, a little young in the perimeter and the, you know, this, at the, in the post where they're also really relying on guys are not quite maybe the, the fits that they're hoping for. Um, and then too, yeah, they've, they've, they've had a trouble with, you know, in a lot of games where they, they've shown themselves to be competitive, but they have a, you know, a four or five or six minute stretch where they just kind of lapse and let go, let go of the rope a little bit. And they find themselves down, you know, 10 or 12 points and, and just given the offensive struggles they've had, that that's typically proven to be too much for them. So a lot of things, but yeah, you, I think you've hit on, on some of them, Jordan. You mentioned Moses Wright and then Jose Alvarado, who is becoming a revelation in, right, in the professional right. ranks as well. Uh -huh. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. When you think about that 2021 team that you mentioned earlier, wins the ACC title, go to goes to the NCAA tournament, did that raise the level of expectations of Georgia Tech fans, of people who contribute to the program and, and just the, the people around the Atlanta area that, oh, maybe this is something that could, you know, not be a normal thing winning the ACC title right. every year, but this is a team that is now on the up and up and right. has taken that step back towards, I don't want to say mediocrity, but it, the results have not <laughs> been what you would. That's a way to call it a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh... I would, well, I mean, I, I think it probably did raise expectations, but I think reasonably so. I mean, I think, uh, you know, you have to go back a little bit, but, you know, I guess, well, 15, 20, 30 years ago, this used to be one of the premier teams in the ACC, which obviously is a long, long time ago. Um, but I think, you know, for a lot of people, typically older fans, they think, you know, that's maybe now that it'd be a team going to the final four, you know, even occasionally, but, but, but it should be in the tournament fairly consistently. Um, you, you, you know, people talk often about just how deep the recruiting pool is in the state of Georgia and Atlanta and how, it, you know, Texas and ACC school. And so that those two things should, should be, um, should help tech be, uh, you know, more competitive than it's been, you know, in, in pastors seven years, this is seventh. They've been in the tournament once. Um, they went to the NIT once his first year. So that's that's two two postseason bursts uh, in six years, and it would certainly look like they're not going to make it this year. Um, so yeah, so I think once they got to the tournament, won the tournament, the ACC tournament, won the ACC, NCAA tournament, I think there was a feeling, okay, you know, things are maybe starting to, you know, the the the, the program is as Josh Passer has uh, envisioned and 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 sold it, you know, maybe they're getting to that point and. Last year uh, was a was a big step back for different reasons, and then this year certainly has, has been an even bigger one. And 
Um, so yeah, that's disappointing. I think you're hoping at least to be, you know, shows, you know, that they're in it and, and, you know, make, you know, making strides forward to getting back to that place. But, um, but this year, yeah, it has, I mean, I think there's, there are signs you can see, but certainly not really tangible evidence of, yeah, this team is, you know, next year. Yeah, definitely. It seems to be much better. There's not that sort of, I guess, feeling or confidence. And so, yeah. Um, the, so to answer question, yeah, I think it did raise expectations, but, but given that, you know, you're in the ACC and if you can be even, even in the middle, you're going to be competitive, uh, you know, in that, you know, in the postseason picture um, to, to not be there. Yeah. Is, is, you know, yeah, it's a, a step back. Uh, moving on to the matchup itself, me, Ethan and I are big Ken Palm guys. So we just look mm-hmm. at kind of those stats. Uh, they're one yeah. Georgia Tech is 140 overall and 186 on offense. So how do you think uh, it's best for the Yellow Jackets to attack the zone? You were talking about the shooting earlier, right. um, but you, what do you think their plan of attack is for Saturday? Um, well, certainly that's a big part of it uh, is the three-point shooting. Um, you know, I think uh, it seems like Georgia Tech has always kind of had a pretty good plan. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, and I know that their, their big games with Syracuse is just run Tech out of the, excuse me, out of the gym. I think both in Syracuse and uh, down in Atlanta, but um, but there've also been games I think when when they've been pretty competitive and Tech has, has gotten a share. So I think you know a lot of it. I'm sure you see this a lot with with the zone is you know you get get the ball in the middle and you know maybe play two post game you know high low. Um, I'm sure certainly you know a big another big priority will be you know to get the transition game going and and to uh, you know to get get set up or to, to score before you know Syracuse can set up defensively. Um, and I'm not super familiar, I confess, with you know Syracuse personnel, but uh, but uh, you know, given that um, you know, they're I think rebounding will have to be important. They, they've done better offensive rebounding, and I think that's an area probably you know you see with zone teams that you know it's tougher for zone teams to, to box out on defense, and so that maybe that's an area where they can they're hoping that they can you know get some extra extra possessions and baskets. Um, defensively, you know, they, they, they mix it up, you know, they, they typically plot of a one three one. they, they, they played some man, I think, depending on the personnel. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, you know, just hoping to, you know, planning on defending well, defending the three while just saying that they really count on and enforcing turnovers. I guess I have a, I have a couple part question here for you uh-huh. before we wrap things up. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to get at is what will be, it's kind of an open-ended question, a fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Georgia Tech will beat Syracuse on Saturday if what happens? Is there one thing specifically that you can point to that you think could be a key determiner or do you think it's a a variety of things? Uh, Let's see here. Um, I mean, it's, it's some of the basic things, certainly, you know, they, they can't shoot two for 21 from three, certainly, but I, you know, I, I think, you know, they'll give themselves a much better chance if, if, if they're, if they're doing well enough uh, from the outside to, to take some pressure out, maybe, maybe offensively uh, they've, they've had a lot of trouble uh, scoring consistently uh, in, in, in the, in the lane, um, whether that's, you know, getting layups out of, out of their offense or, 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 you know, Javon Franklin, that one of the other, the backup post player, Rodney Howard scoring um, near the basket. So um, yeah, I would say that maybe those two things. Well, yeah. Yeah. God, that's not a, not a huge, but if they're scoring close to the basket and far from the basket, I'll do better than that. I think, I think maybe the thing that they need to avoid is, is having, you know, a, a lapse where they, they just, you know, can't score a basket for five minutes. That's, that's been a big killer for them, particularly it's happened either at the beginning of the, the, second half or or the end of the first. And so if they are able to, you know, to score consistently and, and, you know, not, not get in a funk, um, I think I like, you know, they're generally speaking, I think defensively they should be okay, but yeah, it's, it's maybe it's that thing of just, you know, staying in the game and not, not having a, a stretch where they just, you know, fall, fall out of the game. I don't know if you've made an official prediction yet, but if uh-huh. we could trouble you for one, sure. I saw Bart Torvik. Uh, the last I saw had Georgia Tech as a three-point favorite based on his models in this game. Uh-huh. Do you agree with that? Do you like the the Yellow Jackets over the Orange, or how do you see this one playing out? Boy, um, you know, I haven't thought a ton about it. Uh, as I said, I'm not super super familiar with, with Syracuse. 
Um, but the thing is, I mean, part of me feels like just the way that Georgia Tech is playing, where you know they, they I think they're probably starting to struggle with confidence a little bit. Um, it, it's one of those things where you know there's maybe the sense of uh, what's going to happen this time around. Um, so yeah, until maybe they find their way out of the funk, it's hard to to say. <laughs> I feel pretty good about Georgia Tech's chances here. You know, being at home, I think helps certainly, but they haven't had a ton of support and actually Syracuse is one of those teams that um, it seems like there's a lot of, a lot of Syracuse alumni or, 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 you know, Syracuse fans in the area. And so they, they typically get some support, but so that's someone negated, but, um, but yeah, uh, I I would say it's kind of one of the things I'll, I'll wait to see it happen until I I feel more confident about saying, you know, you know, George Tickland win this game or not. I, I, it's the only thing they can, but yeah, I would, I would suspect that, you know, chances, you know, probability probably favors uh, Syracuse. It'll be a very interesting to see what happens down in Atlanta on Saturday. That's Ken Segura of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me on, guys.